Stanislav Petrov is a man who stopped World War III exactly because he hesitated and exactly because he was afraid that if he makes a bad decision, huge harms are going to be caused in our society. He got an information that Americans lands the nuke and the Russians should do the same. Exactly because he was afraid of consequences, he hesitated to do that, didn't do that, and stopped probably the worst conflict that we would have after World War III. Fear. Fear is the thing that rather than make you make bad decisions, Madam Chair, is the thing that stops you from making bad decisions and from causing even bigger harms than you can cause them. Also, when, they, oh, when the opening government mentions the fact that we will always believe that soldiers gave their consent, that is questionable because often in wars we mobilize people and we do not ask them, do you want to be in war and do you want not to be afraid of what might happen to you? Also, what we want to say, which opening government forgets, we erase your fear, but we do not erase your hatred, we do not erase your anger, we do not erase the fact that you cannot stand the other side. And those will be the things, Madam Chair, that, will, uh, that you will use, those will be the emotions that will be included in the moment when you are making the cost-benefit analysis that Go Up Winning Government is talking about. We think that then your cost-benefit analysis is going to be even more harsh on the other side. Also, we think that whenever you have fear, that is the moment that stops you from breaking rules in war. Two reasons. Firstly, you are afraid what's going to happen to you if you break the rules. Are you going to be punished or are you going to get caught? Second thing, you are afraid that if you cause huge harms and you break huge rules, what's going to happen to your entire fellows in the army in case that you really, really, really made something bad. The thing that makes you break the rules, Madam Chair, is actually hatred. Every genocide that happened, which is the clearest example of rule breaking, happened exactly because people weren't afraid and because people hated too much. And you do not erase hatred by the case brought by the opening government. Four things from Belgrade today. Firstly, why we think that fear is basis of humanity. Second, why we think that fear influences us in the decision-making process. Thirdly, how we think wars will be mere, even worse. Fourthly, what's going to happen to civilians. We think that fear and emotions are something that are intrinsic part of every human being. Everything that we've ever done was probably caused by fear. We created houses food, arms, weapons, ways to survive because we were afraid that we were going to die. Once you take fear from people or any other emotion from people, you're, cre you're making them being less humans. You're taking humanity away from them. We think that is preposterous because this is what you create. You create people that are means to an end and not means by themselves. You're saying to them, you're existing so you can serve to our own purposes and you do not have the right to choose your own purpose and to have your own agency because we care about your efficiency, not about humanity that lies within you. We think that is preposterous and we have no right to do something like that. But even more importantly, let's talk about fear. Wars are awful, Madam Chair, and if we could, we would stop them all, but unfortunately we can't. But we can make a world where less people die in those wars. We think that even though fear sometimes might be irrational, we think that is actually the only irrational emotion within the war that stops you from doing preposterous and awful things. Why? Because once you see someone dying in a very bad way on the battlefield, you get afraid. Can this happen to me? What is going to happen if I end up in this situation? And that is the moment where you start hesitating. That is the moment where you want to step up from crossing the line because you are afraid of what might happen to you. That is exactly why we think that fear is good. Because once you have all other emotions included except fear, you're not going to be afraid what's going to happen to you if you go out and just shoot everyone you see in front of yourself. We think that exactly the fear of you being harmed in the end of that war, once you see all preposterous things happening during the war, is exactly the thing that stops you from doing the worst possible things that someone who only has anger and hatred and the idea of killing within himself is going to cause if you don't have the fear. But let's talk about more practical stuff, but before that, closing. Right, but also in the modern world there are ways of removing fear. That's why a lot of war crimes are committed when people are drunk. That's why you give cocaine to soldiers in the First World War. Why won't they still be used? Uh, even if all the things that we are using right now can still be used, we think that even if you're a soldier on the cocaine, the fear sometimes might be the thing that stops you. Once you're not afraid, and I give you cocaine, and you're also full of hatred, there is literally 
nothing that can stop you from causing the biggest possible harm to the other side because you're so much on adrenaline and there is nothing behind in your brain saying you, oh my God, is this the right thing to do? Will something bad happen to me? Is this maybe too much? Because in that moment, you're just a machine. You're not a human being anymore that is driven by one of the strongest emotion any being has faced. Animals are also very important when it comes to fear. Every being on this planet did the most important things for themselves exactly because they were afraid of the fact that they were going to die. Instinct for survival and fear of death are two strongest emotions that any being on this planet has and we are taking that from someone because we think that wars should be more efficient. Let's see what happens with wars. Once you have hatred and, uh, and, and, and hatred as the only two emotions that are staying, we think that is going to be the moment where wars will become even more worse because now genocide is not going to be something that you are going to be afraid of committing because you, have, you don't care are you going to die in that genocide. You don't care if the other side is going to be the one punishing you. You don't care if your uh, general is going to punish you because you did something bad. We see that in Cold War. Exactly the fear was the thing that stopped people from, uh, from going through Cold War, from getting into World War III because they knew this is exactly the worst scenario that can happen to us. In a world where you have nukes, Madam Chair, in a world where you have such a serious weapon, the only thing that probably stops us from using that kind of weapon is exactly the fact that we are afraid if we use it, what is the other side going to do to us? Now you are removing that. Let's also talk about civilians. So in wars, we also often tolerate civilians. Firstly, because that's a rule general in war and we are afraid to break that rule. Secondly, because we're also afraid that if we do that to civilians of the other country, maybe someone is going to do that to the civilians of our country. But now that does not exist anymore. But the thing that does exist, except hatred, is your awareness as a soldier that as many civilians as you kill, the weaker the country gets. You know that is the efficient solution for you, to kill as much as people as possible, regardless are they soldiers or civilians, and therefore you will have bigger chances of winning that war. We think that is exactly the thing that probably is going to happen now. We think that politicians that usually tend to manipulate soldiers, even in the status quo, are going to misuse this even more, are going to push them even more to harm the other side in order for them to win. We think that in status quo we do not use chemical weapon because we are afraid of the huge consequences that can be caused to civilians. But once we we are not afraid of those uh, consequences once we don't think about them. We're going to use every mean that we have in order to win this war, regardless of harms and regardless of what's going to happen to the other side. Because we think that everyone should be treated as humans, because we think that fear stops us from making the worst possible decisions, and because we want as least possible dead people in war. Extremely proud to propose the, oppose this motion. Thank you.